Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Monday, the 13th day of November, year for Lord 2017. Welcome to the John Moore Show. Prepper tip of the day, and we'll, we'll be expanding on this. Um, all of you that have firearms that uh, take uh, detachable magazines, I want to encourage you to get at least 10 magazines for each of those firearms, preferably factory magazines. There can be exceptions. If you do get a non-factory magazine, be sure you do your due, your due diligence, your homework, prior to buying an aftermarket magazine. And that is your prepper tip of the day. Uh, usually Jimmy Jinsling uh, will call in Monday mornings. He has not called in yet. When he does, we will bring Jimmy on board, and we'll be uh, discussing firearms, as we do most Mondays, which we're going to go ahead and do anyway. Um, it's been a learning experience for me to uh, learn about magazines for firearms. Uh, it cost me some money uh, to buy things that uh, were incorrect and wrong. Uh, take my M14, for example, the rifleman's rifle. And um, it looks like Jimmy has called in. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, sir. Uh, I was kind of filling in uh, our engineer there on what's the deal with our phone systems and all. We're working on it. We just can't seem to get the computer to recognize the headset or the uh, microphone. Uh huh. Mm. Well, technology, uh, isn't it great? When it works, it's wonderful. When it doesn't, it's maddening. Um, I don't know if you heard my prepper tip of the day, Jimmy, but my prepper tip of the day is encouraging everybody who owns firearms to take detachable magazines to buy 10 magazines for each of those firearms. Uh, mainly factory magazines as opposed to aftermarket. There are some after, excellent aftermarket magazines out there, but you need to exercise caution, don't you, sir? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we had an issue with that, uh, I guess, about a month ago. A uh, customer had a, uh, it was a production AR platform, and... For some strange reason, uh, it wouldn't pick up the first round when when the bolt was locked back and the uh, mag was inserted and the bolt re was released. It would not pick up the first round. And uh, after that, it seemed to function fine. And we tried several different mags, same thing, but they were all from the same manufacturer. Right. And... Um, Got to looking at them, uh, took some of my own mags, and we went through, and um, I had some stock uh, Colt mags, and then I had some that were aftermarkets that I used, different manufacturers, and we found several of them that ran perfectly, and then started comparing those with the ones that didn't, and everything looked perfect putting them side by side and everything else. Took the micrometer. I was going to say, did you get the micrometer out? Yep, got the micrometer out and started checking. And the problem of it was that at the top, what uh, I call it the horseshoe, other people call it the lips, that fold over and keep the rounds in the magazine with the slot between them that uh, allows the bolt to pick them up. I noticed on the back of it, and I measured them, the ones that were having problems with the first round, the issue was that the bolt didn't have enough force from, coming from just the retained position to uh, catch that, and it was actually overriding the magazine and missing the round. Right. And took a file and just a little 45-degree... Uh, cut maybe sixteenth of an inch wide on the curve at the very back on both of those lips and clean that up a little bit and never had another problem with it. So the reason I'm bringing that up is say you do not have access to magazines at some time in the future, um, i.e. buying them new, but you do acquire some and some will feed, some will not. Uh, easy way to do it, uh, other than having machinist blue, 
to, to look for impact points is to take and rub your fingers on chalk and rub it on the magazine. Now, what it's going to do, it's not going to leave a white color, but it's going to put a gray uh, dust smudge on there. And by cycling the bolt several times back and forth, you can see that where it will either contact that, leave a shiny spot or something, and it will tell you where the problem is. Uh, doing that can ins- or knowing how to do that can ensure later on the ability to take mags that don't want to function and make them function. Uh, another problem that we run into on a lot of mags, uh, one particular brand, the thermal mold, uh, is that when they're empty, they fit in the magazine well and drop easily. Now, this is not only AR mags. I'm talking pistol mags as well. They make right. uh, mags for 1911, Glocks, uh, Smiths, Taurus, everything else. The mags, uh, when they're empty, insert and drop by gravity. When they're filled with ammunition... They insert and are a little snug, but you have to physically remove them right. when you hit the magazine release because they swell just a bit. And uh, that's another thing to look at, ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking at mags. Uh, fill, them with ma- fill them with ammunition and put them in, and when you hit the bolt release, it should, or not the bolt release, but the mag release, the magazine should drop free. Uh, now, if it will not do that with a steel mag, factory mag, then what you need to do is look at the inside of the mag well and see where the tight spot is. Uh, right, right. On 1911s, if you have that problem, typically it's going to be in the trigger horseshoe that you're going to need a gunsmith to look at. Um, on Glock. The problem with those is typically, in, again, in the upper end where the uh, retainer is. So if your mags will not drop free uh, empty, then you need to have a competent gunsmith uh, or armorer in, in that case. Look at it and figure out what's hanging up because one of the... Drills that I'm sure John teaches this and I do is in the AR platform or in the handgun platform, if you have a failure to fire, it's rack, it's tap rack and, and try it again. By rack means that you, you hit the bottom of the magazine, make sure it's in place, rack the slide or the bolt, and then uh, I tell people to do it twice. And then see if it functions. If it doesn't, then you drop the mag totally and rack it twice, put a new mag in, charge it, and then go back to work. If that mag does not drop free, how much time does that add to your mag change, John? Another, oh, probably between two and three seconds. Too but much. there's a... There's a I agree with what you're saying, Jimmy. Uh, there's another aspect of that, of this, and that's to uh, encourage people, if they do buy magazines, to make sure they test them as opposed to just putting them in storage and, and thinking they'll be ready for use and they'll be reliable uh, in a future event uh, where they're needed for uh, preserving uh, innocent life and, and defending property. Uh, that's a huge mistake is to make an assumption that magazines that you've bought will function without testing them first, isn't it? Exactly, and and the thing is, um, this goes with the same manufacturer. Um, you have, uh, oh, let's say Magpul. Magpul is probably the largest manufacturer, uh, and I may be wrong on that. It's just my experience and what I sell. Um, Magpul may be the largest manufacturer in aftermarket magazines, but, and they've got an excellent quality control program. But that does not mean to say that one's going to slip through somewhere. And, by the way, that was my dog, Theodore, saying good morning to everyone. Uh-huh. Good morning. <laughs> so, everybody says good morning, Theodore. But uh, uh, 
whenever you order magazines or that you go down to your local gun shop, and uh, I recommend patronizing them first, um, especially if you've got a good gun shop. Now, if they're a fly-by-night group that really don't know anything, shop around more. Um, if you can't find anything that way, contact us, and we'll see if we can help you. Uh, more than once, I've had customers order magazines from me, and I ship them to them, and Teresa always puts a note in there. Take these out of the package, put them in your in your firearm, make sure that they fit, make sure that they drop free, then load them with ammo and make sure that they fit and they drop free, and then take them to the range and use them and make sure they're going to function. If they don't function, put a piece of tape on them, what's wrong, put them in a bag, send them back to us, and we'll replace them. And uh, you have to be able to do that. Uh, we've had customers that have spent five, $600 just on a magazine purchase, and out of that, maybe seven or eight of them don't, and, well, I know one, for a fact, one time half of the order did not, uh, function well in the person's gun. They were all the same brand, and um, from best I could tell, the same lot. But about half of them would either stick or would not feed properly, and they marked each one of them, sent them back. We filled the order and uh, sent it back to them. And uh, we checked them here, well, except for the Glock ones. We didn't, none of us have a Glock here. But uh, just took their word for it, and I contacted the manufacturer, explained the problem, and it's amazing the manufacturers don't quabble. Uh, I, I packed them up, sent them back, and got replacements. So John's very, very true on that, ladies and gentlemen. I recommend a very absolute minimum 10 magazines for uh, any handgun, any rifle that you have that has a magazine on it, and that includes the bolt action. Um, Savage and Remington, uh, there's a model out now of the uh, eight, of the uh, 700, John, that I saw at one of the gun shows. Instead of having the four-round uh, through-the-bolt uh, internal Pro. magazine, it actually yeah, has a magazine. Yeah. It's from the factory. It's from Remington. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's, I'd heard of it. It's the first one that I'd ever seen, though. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, extra mags. Uh, and 22 mags are notorious for failure to feed or for being tight in, in the uh, action. Uh, on 1022s, which is the most popular of all semi-automatic 22s out there, Stay with the Ruger mags. Um, the aftermarket 20-round, 30-round, uh, 50-round mags, uh, they're great, but I have never seen one that will reliably feed without some hiccup somewhere in time. Right. Uh, right. Just stick with the, with the factory 1022 mags, and you'll never have a problem in the world. So, yeah, and 1022 now comes in a pistol version also. It's a big pistol, have, but, you know. It's, it's like, oh, my goodness, now what are they going to do? First they had, mm -hmm. to, of course, the regular 1022, then the 1022 takedown, and now this. So, my goodness, what are they doing to our favorite, John? Well, I'd like to see them re-engineer the, uh, the 22 Magnum version and put it back in production with all the uh, defects worked out of it. You and me both. You and me both. I, I, um, I told you know I told a very good friend 20 years ago, or that uh, if Ruger ever made that 1022 and 22 mag, that they would that would be the ideal uh, rimfire, and of course they did, and of course they screwed it up. So, it's, <laughs> um, actually, I think what they need to do is go talk to Caltech. Caltech's always been good about helping other manufacturers. Um, if they could swallow their pride and go talk to Caltech and show them the original blueprints and everything and have their engineers look at it. Because you have to admit, someone that can make a um, the PMR-30 and somehow create the perfect semi-automatic 
22 Magnum pistol that reliably over and over and over again functions, uh, they found the secret somewhere. They did. They did. Uh, they need to, they need I've to got spread three the friends that have those, and I've had the joy of shooting them. And that is probably, in my opinion, the most practical survival handgun that anyone could carry. It's, it's a dandy. Uh, I haven't had a chance to shoot one yet myself, but I look forward to it. Uh, well, Jimmy, if uh, we have listeners that uh, might be needing magazines, and, of course, you're in, in the business with Desert Eagle Shooters, DesertEagleShooters.com, and if they have questions about magazines or want to order some, is that something you can help, help them with? Oh, yes, sir. Um, they can email us at jimi at hdc-nm.com. Uh, they can visit the website and use the contact form there. Um, I've been having a big spam problem with that lately, and i um, going to discuss with Tim possibly disabling that for about a week or ten days and see if that will kill the spam problem and then put it back in operation. Right. Um, but that or uh, even the phone number, uh, if they want to call me or text me, the number is 575-513-2842. And uh, like I've always told folks, if we can't find it and I don't have an answer, I will find you an answer or find you the person to talk to. Uh, I don't know everything, and I'm the first to tell you that. Actually, my wife is the first to tell you that. Uh-huh, uh, I bet. <laughs> she, does it in a li- she does it in a loving manner. So... Uh, if I can't have the answer, then what I'll do is I'll find someone that does. And practically everything out there, ladies and gentlemen, has an aftermarket magazine for it. Some work, some don't. Hold that thought. We have a break. Call numbers 800-313-9443. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. As most of you know, my regular listeners, I offer energy cleaners for sale at my website. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, go to my website, thelibertyman.com, educate yourself about these marvelous healing devices. We focus on pain mitigation and getting a great night's sleep. Arthritis pain, joint pain, back pain, doesn't matter. Keep in mind, I offer for me to you personally a 30-day money-back Guaranteed. That's what I do. Energy cleaners, $285, shipping included to American zip codes. You can educate yourself all about the energy cleaner right there at my website, the patent application, the wonderful testimonials. Be sure and check out the factory-made fitted mattress pads to go with the energy cleaner. Now, I offer for me to you personally a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's what I do. I have a toll-free order line, or you can order it right at my website at thelibertyman.com. The toll-free order line is 800 800- Five nine two nine five four three. I said again, eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here. It's taken three years before I could offer the intershelter domes for sale. During those three years, several different governments and militaries were taking all their production. The intershelter dome homes may be just what you've been looking for to provide affordable, energy efficient, permanent, and attractive housing. These dome homes are prefabricated units that can be assembled in a few hours by two men with a ladder and simple hand tools. Check out the photos of these dome homes built in the Arctic, on tropical beaches, in suburban areas, and in forests. All the details, many photographs, and the pricing of the dome homes are listed on the left-hand side of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. I think you'll find these homes are not only attractive, but they're energy efficient and a bonus. You can disassemble them and reassemble them as many times as you feel you need the need to. Pretty great, huh? Something that's very, very unique. Check them out at my website at The Liberty Man.
are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 13th of November, visiting with Jimmy Jensling, the proprietor of Desert Eagle Shooters. That's DesertEagleShooters.com. One-stop shopping to get what you need for your firearms, accessories, and parts, and advice. Right, Jimmy? Well, we try to. Um, there have been a few things occasionally that we can't locate, but the search is always ongoing. We never give up. Um, talking about magazines and everything, John, one thing that I don't think a lot of people uh, uh, think about, and um, it, it's really quite simple, magazines can be disassembled and cleaned um, because you have to think about it. They have to put them together somehow, ladies and gentlemen. And if 90% of them, I would say maybe 95%, if you look on the bottom of your magazine, there's going to be a little button or hole, um, something in the center on the bottom of the magazine that... You depress that, and the bottom slide, the, the base of the magazine, will slide off. Typically, they slide forward. That's not always the case, but the base will slide off about halfway over, cover the bottom of the magazine with your hand in a cup fashion, and remove that because the spring's going to pop out, and you'll keep the base of the spring and uh, that is normally pressed against it on some mags. Take the spring out, the follower will come out, and wipe all of that down. And take your, uh, what I find works great is a uh, shotgun mop. Uh, There's a particular cleaning tool that you can buy, ladies and gentlemen, for all calibers of shotguns, and 410, um, works the best on the 1911 and single stack mags and 12 gauge works excellent on everything else but you put this on your uh, cleaning rod and simply run it back and forth inside the uh, magazine dry now that's important to have two of these one that when you buy it and take it out of the package take your sharpie and mark on the mop a D and that's for the dry one. The other one, you're going to coat it lightly and, and wring it out with your favorite lubricating oil. When you do that, make sure you put the one that you put in oil in a baggie so that it won't attract dust and crap and everything else around the shop or in your gun bag. And you take that dry mop and you run it all through the inside of your magazine, get all the crud and everything out, and then take the uh, one with oil and just one pass up the, go when you're going in, go along the front of the magazine, you get to the top end of it, push it to the back, and pull it back through. What you want is a very light coat of oil on the inside of that. It does two things. One, it prevents the uh, follower from binding, or at least helps eliminate it. And two, it quiets the spring down. If you're doing rapid fire on a semi-automatic rifle or a handgun, every now and then you'll get a twin in your, that you'll hear, especially on the AR. If you're, your head's right against the stock where that buffer tube is, and you'll hear that spring kind of twanging inside there. If there's a light coat of oil on there, it'll help quieten it down. But if you maintain your mags like that, ladies and gentlemen, oh, just once a year, go through them, check them, and uh, look, at the mag- look at the springs when you take them out. If the springs are compressed and not at least a magazine and a quarter longer than the mag, you can always give them a little tug and, and stretch them out that far. Don't pull them to where they're three times the size of the magazine. That doesn't work Hold that thought, well. Jimmy. Hold that thought. We have a break. Call numbers 800-313-9443.
You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We're continuing our energy cleaner promotion, which began August of 2016. In this promotion, you get to buy an energy cleaner, $70 off retail, and a mattress pad, 10% off retail. $200 of the purchase price of the energy cleaner goes to Republic Broadcasting. This is a great way to help get energy cleaners out to people who need them and have some uh, financial issues to deal with. And, of course, a great way to support Republic Broadcasting. Here's what you do. Send in a postcard. My address is John Moore, P.O. Box 201, Davidsville, Missouri. We pick a postcard every two weeks. If your postcard is drawn, uh, you get the chance to buy the energy cleaner, $70 off retail, and 10% off the mattress pads. Put your name and your address, your telephone number and your email address on the postcard, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 13th of November. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. Yes, we have um, a new images of another movie. If you have been listening for a couple of days, images of North America with new coastlines. The 1957 film uh, titled The 27th Day the 27th day. In addition, um, uh, one of our listeners found another image from a, a previously posted uh, television show, Investigation Discovery Series on the Unabomber. Uh, another image that's uh, a little bit bigger and has more clarity to it. A very nice full-color image of North America. It's a Navy map. It is the Navy map. If you... Uh, Find another image of a continent with new coastlines in a movie or a TV show, magazine. Get that screenshot to me as a, as a thank you. You get your choice of any of my five DVDs. That's our that's what that's what we're doing. We need to be focused on NCIS. We have not yet got a crystal clear, sharp image of that map yet. I know there has to be one out there, maybe more. I'm thinking earlier in the season. Uh, in the, earlier in the uh, series is when uh, one might be found. Uh, so let's move forward with that project. It's a fun project. Also, my website, of course, are energy cleaners. Uh, I spoke to Diane Zerger the other day. She hasn't been on with with us now for a couple of years, and um, I've been coaching her on something she's been dealing with, and I, I believe we're going to have her for three or four minutes this coming Thursday. Diane has bought more than a dozen energy cleaners. She's a bright woman. She had a retired from the Air Force and now is in her second career, is about to retire from her second career. Very bright, resourceful uh, woman. And um, the point I'm trying to make is, why would she buy the second one, let alone a dozen of these, if the first one didn't work? Pain, mitigation. Arthritis pain, joint pain, back pain, it will help. Not getting a great night's sleep, it will help. You can get the details at my website. Only two hundred eighty-five dollars should be included to American zip codes. And check out the factory-made fitted mattress pads. I'm shipping um, a large order to a Clifford in the Marshall Islands. Uh, a very large order. Uh, he uh, cleaned me out of inventory. After I'm placing new orders today to to get restocked here by the end of the week. Uh, I do take PayPal, Mastercard, Visa. Checks can be sent to my address at the liberty man dot uh, at my at uh, at my website the liberty man dot com is where my address is. Toll free hour line twenty four hours a day. Here it is eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. I say again eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. Visiting with Jimmy Jensling, the proprietor of uh, Desert Eagle Shooters. That website is desert eagle shooters dot com. And if you got a question or comment, give us a call. 
You can call a number here at Republic Broadcasting is 800-313-9443. Uh, Jimmy, I've always by, been impressed by uh, men or women who have a large number of magazines. It's just something that really impresses me because so few men and women do that, don't they? Oh, yeah. They, uh, they'll keep enough just to go to the range and, and have some fun. And they don't take into account, in my opinion, that magazines do wear out and that uh, over time they're going to get uh, dented. Uh, you, want, you want to slow down a magazine speed rate, let it get dented. Right, uh, right. That is, and there are... Well, Jimmy, it was, uh, it was 40 years ago this year that I got involved with a uh, combat pistol competition. And... Uh, my uh, farm of choice was my Browning High Power. So I'm out there on the range, uh, you know, at these competitions once a month. And I learned very quickly uh, that magazines are damaged. And they started, guys started, this is, you know, 40 years ago, guys started taking uh, sheets of rubber and cutting off a, a, a pad and gluing it to the bottom of their magazines to help protect them. Because when you do magazine changes on the range, that magazine drops and it's going to hit whatever it hits. Uh, dirt, rock, concrete, um, and they will get dented and they will get damaged. Uh, so I've known this for a very long time, uh, and that's one of the things about being involved in competition. Uh, you learn things that we'd never learn otherwise, don't you, Jimmy? Exactly. And the most common damage that uh, happens to magazines, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you're doing rapid fire, uh, and you're doing either kneeling or transitions or moving target or whatever is they get stepped on. And first time it may not hurt it so bad, but you do that two or three times and you're going to notice that you're going to start having feed problems. Well, it depends uh, on who's doing the stepping also. If it's a 100-pound woman or a 300-pound man, and whether it's on soft earth or, or rock there's a lot of a lot of variables there but you're absolutely right being stepped on is going to damage that magazine yep and then of course going back to the cleaning deal you're dropping that mag it's sitting in the dirt and so um it, it's just a little detail stuff ladies and gentlemen on maintaining your mags and and keeping them functioning um one point that I, I didn't mention a while ago on the mag disassemblies and everything, the no, most notorious magazines for getting dirty is going to be your uh, 22 rifle magazines and your 22 pistol magazines. 22 uh, ammunition is inherently dirty. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. And the 1022 mags that we were discussing earlier do disassemble. And if you do an Internet search, there's some instructions on how to disassemble, clean, and reassemble Ruger 1022 mags. Uh, if you can't find it, or some of our uh, listeners I know for a fact because of the... I actually love getting postal mail, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you. Uh, they will write me a letter, John, and ask a question, and we correspond back and forth uh, via Pony Express. And, well, uh, I have don't have internet access, Jimmy, and they listen on their smartphones um, or on the telephone itself, and mm -hmm. they don't have yep. internet access. Uh, I have neighbors can, close by here that have, have no and, uh, I can get right. them the information that they need. Um, that brings up another good point, John. We'll just kind of segue into this a little bit. Notebooks. Ladies and gentlemen, John has talked about notebooks forever, about your preps your equipment, your guns, uh, everything. Every gun that I own, I've got a data book that goes with it, which is all the performance and uh, technical information about it and what rounds and data cards and data sheets for distance and, and things like that. They're, they're pretty intense sometimes. But... The one most important thing that's inside of the page of every single one of them is a little, and, I, and what I've done is put it on a copier and reduced it in size so that they're 3x5 uh, index card size. 
and I've got breakdown information and diagrams of the weapon, uh, of each component of the weapon, say the lower parts on an AR or the magazine or um, the Taurus uh, PT-92, stripping it down and things. All those are in there. And even though I can do it, the person, uh, let's say my wife, Teresa, she's out and I'm, I'm on the road to VA appointments or something like that, and she's doing some practice and there's a malfunction, rather than set the gun on the desk and let me come home and worry about the malfunction later, she, can go to, she knows that she can go to the book on that gun, open the cover of it, and right inside, the very first thing, it's either going to be in a little plastic pocket or in the pocket in the cover, is going to be the diagrams and the teardown. And my little bride will sit there and study it long enough and maybe call me and, and ask a question, but I have no qualms in the world about her field stripping a weapon clearing the problem and putting it back together. If you do that and your family members or your team knows where that is and you all work together and have a uh, system that is duplicated in everyone's profile, then you know where that information card is. And that will save hassle and headaches and possibly even a life sometime in the future that you have a weapon go down for a simple malfunction and the owner is not there, but his information card is. And in, you know, there are certain handguns out there that have quirks to how you tear them down. Um, I'm not exactly sure about it, John. You may have uh, had some more contact on some of these and others, but someone was telling me that on one of the new Glocks, when you go to field strip it and everything, you remove the mag like all of us are taught to do, and you do a couple of things, and you get ready to take the slide off, but in order for the slide to come off, you have to reinsert the magazine so that it evidently triggers some release or something that allows the slide to come off. So, no, I'm not... Aware of that? I'm not. I'm not a big fan of Glocks, and, and I've shot. A, I've shot a couple of them, and, and that just made me even less enthusiastic about them. Uh, the Glocks have caused some issues with police departments. The, the Glock salesman, when they approach the chief of police and the board of police commissioners, uh, they have this spiel that they do, which has been quite successful. Uh, I have to admit, uh, these Glocks are so simple and so safe, gentlemen. Talking to the board of police commissioners, that you can save money by not spending as much time uh, training men because the Glock is so simple and safe. You don't need to spend as much time training uh, and save money in that manner. Uh, and that's what they do. They buy the Glocks and they cut back on the training that the men and women receive, leading to frequently uh, some very bad consequences, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. And... Um Police departments and those that are not shooters in any form are the biggest hazard to our law enforcement altogether. Um, I'm not, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but it is mandatory in New York City that all of their handguns have to have a minimum trigger pull poundage, that's the operative word, minimum, trigger pull poundage of 12 pounds. Right, right. Well, that's that's when you put lawyers in charge of things that that uh, should be put in charge of by uh, the shooters, uh, the experienced combat shooters. Uh, now, if you don't know what Jim and I, Jimmy, and I, Jimmy and I are talking about, uh, when you put a 12-pound trigger on a pistol, you cannot possibly get uh, accuracy that I'm used to getting. It, it's just simply, and I'm. I'm a very experienced shooter. Uh, there's, I'm not, I'm not a international, a world class competitor by any means, but I have, I have uh, a lot of experience shooting a lot of different firearms, and um, uh, it, it's it's a massive mistake. Uh, there, that kind of rule is designed to uh, put the 
lives of the perpetrator and the criminals ahead of the lives of the innocents that the police are trying to save and ahead of the lives of the police themselves. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. That's exactly what they're doing, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, exactly. And a good example of that, ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, Google the New York bank robbery, uh, I think it's about five or six years ago, um, a silent alarm went off, police arrived, uh, it was a corner bank, um, one of those ones where typically the doors actually open out to the exact corner of the intersection. Right. And as the police arrived and were getting out of their vehicles, the robbers came out and started shooting at the cops, and the cops expended somewhere in the neighborhood of 72 rounds. The bank robbers expended like 40 uh, both bank robbers got away. One was minor, had minor injuries, but there were nine pedestrians that were shot by the cops, uh, or, or innocents, I should say, that were right. hit by right. the police gunfire. And Does it all surprise. came down to Does that 12-pound trigger. Uh, oh. the, the investigation pointed out that that was the reason, that was the cause and uh, of the guys, bad guys getting away and the innocents being hit. Well, it's not so, going to change anything. Uh, there was a young man, I, I trained him to do uh, investigative work. Oh, this is back in the uh, mid-'80s, and he moved on with his career to uh, become a, a uniformed officer for the Veterans Administration Hospital in St. Louis, and and he, he he's issued one of these pistols with a 12-pound ticker. 12 pound trigger on it which we talked about it and, and there, he has no choice he has to use that pistol with that 12 pound trigger and um, it's such a shame it's such a shame to have men making decisions uh, based on ignorance based on fear based on liability and, and in my opinion they're creating more liability than they're solving what do you think exactly Exactly, and it's all, like you said, it's lawyers um, getting involved in, in things that they, A, know nothing about, and B, they know nothing about. <laughs> that's just right. the most simple way to put it. Well, that, that's very true. Now, an untrained individual that is not properly trained and properly disciplined with a pistol with a two pound trigger or a three or a four pound trigger uh, might might make a mistake that uh, wouldn't be made by a, a more experienced person with more training and so they're they're going the wrong direction the, the way to cure it is not by increasing the the, the uh, trigger poundage you know, the way to cure this is to have better trained, more skilled police officers. Yep. And, well, the, in my opinion, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm a very opinionated this morning. The majority of incidents, law enforcement or otherwise, that happen with a handgun is because people forget Rule number three of the four safety rules. Do not put your finger on the trigger until your sights are on the target. People have an inherent uh, habit, I guess would be the way to do it, of when they draw to immediately put their finger into the uh, trigger guard and near the trigger, maybe not on it, but inside. Hold that thought, and Jimmy. Hold this, that thought. We have a break. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 13th of November, visiting with Jimmy Jensling. His website is DesertEagleShooters.com. Let's continue, Jimmy. All right, sir. Um, kind of running the gamut this morning on it, which is great. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, they can always call us. Um, 
phone number is uh, 313, excuse me, uh, 1-800-313-9443. But also, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a handgun or a rifle that does have a trigger that is giving you problems or maybe a stiff or something else, please, unless you are very, very familiar with your handgun and doing trigger work, and the geometry that's involved in, in working on triggers, please don't do it. Um, take it to your gun shop, your gunsmith, uh, find an armorer. And the reason I'm bringing up armorers now, John, is Glock and uh, Sig are both training uh, certain dealers and everything uh, in the armorer portion of their uh, handguns. Right. So some stores are authorized uh, armorers for the company, and that does mean that they've gone to training for that company. Uh, if they're advertising it and you want to check them out, ask to see their certificates. If they don't show you the certificates, don't trust that they're an armorer because they, right. will, be, they will have those at the store, and they'll be very proud of them. Uh, they will. They will. I, the men I know who have those certificates, they, they uh, have them framed on their wall of their shop very prominently displayed. Yes, sir. And But if you do have trigger problems, take it to them. Uh, please don't do it yourself. Um, I have a nice scar and uh, the remains of a hole in my right foot on the outside because an individual wanted to do some of his own trigger work but didn't inform me. Uh, he said he was having problems with the handgun and didn't inform me that he'd done trigger work before uh, I handled it. So enough said on that subject. Um, ladies and gentlemen, safety is of the utmost importance. When you're practicing your draw, when you're on the range and you're, you're training, get into the habit. And this is one that should be muscle memory number one. When you have the handgun or the rifle in your hands at any time, your finger is not inside that trigger guard, is nowhere near that trigger until your sights are on the target and you know what you want to shoot at. That will eliminate 99.5% of the unintended discharges accidental shootings, and everything else. That, that, that's number three on the list of, of the safety rules, and we stand by those rules 100% here at Desert Eagle when we're on the range. Absolutely, and I support that as well. Absolutely. So, um, again, uh, this morning, first hour, we talked about magazines uh, and triggers and stuff. On the magazines, John, I've had two of our listeners contact me about to order magazines because they had problems with firearms. Okay. Hold that thought. we got a top of the hour break. We'll be oh, right back top of the hour. All right, we're back. Let's jump in. Jerry Moore here on second hour on Monday, the 13th of November. Visiting with Jimmy Jensling, the proprietor of Desert Eagle Shooters. That website is deserteagleshooters.com. And this is Firearms Monday. We talk about guns, the gun culture, gun laws, anything and everything to do with guns and the gun culture. Right, Jimmy? We try to, sir. We do. And uh, speaking about gun laws, ladies and gentlemen, right now is the time. 202-224-3121. And I've been made aware of another um, number that goes in is 202-225-3121. That's the Capitol Switchboard, Washington, D.C. You need to get on uh, your congressman's tails, call them at least once a week, preferably twice, and demand that before the year is out that they get the uh, Hearing Protection Act on the floor and more importantly, the national reciprocity on the floor and get it up for a vote. Uh, Speaker Ryan tabled it. The, the day of the uh, uh, Mandalay shooting in Las Vegas, 
he it was due to come onto the floor and um, for discussion and vote, and he tabled it with as uh, Congressman Pierce has told me, he tabled it with no apparent uh, date in the future to bring it up for for discussion and vote. And uh, it'll be they're going to turn into a a Republican winner is what they're going to do. Uh, the, the people uh, in Congress, they know uh, what's going on across this country. The uh, huge pro-gun sentiment around the United States, Jimmy. And uh, we got uh, everybody in Congress gets elected every two years, which will be next year in 2018. And um, it will be a massive victory for the Republicans, I believe. And this will be this will be part of it. That's what that's my prediction. Yep. And they're going, they're going to use it as a, uh, um, oh, campaign deal. Don't let them do that. Tell them that if they're going to use it for a campaign pledge or a campaign deal, brag on the fact that they got it passed. Brag on the fact that that is another uh, irritant of the libs and the gun control left that they put to rest. Uh, bring that point to them and explain to them that if they can't get it done right now with a Republican Congress, a Republican Senate, a Republican in the White House, and a conservative Supreme Court for the most part, then they're fired. That's it. Find someone to run against them. Find an individual in your community to replace these morons on the city council the county commissioners, your state representatives, your national representatives in Congress, find someone to replace them and let them know you're going to do that and start getting on uh, morning talk shows in your community. Uh, Albuquerque, for example, uh, I go up there a lot for VA appointments. They've got a gazillion and one radio stations and over half of them have morning drive time shows that uh, have call-ins and discuss things. Ladies and gentlemen, if your community is like that, start calling in and start complaining that this congressman or this senator is holding up this bill or that bill or not taking calls from constituents, whatever. You start putting these people on public notice. Their local office is going to know it. Their local office is going to have a message in the D.C. office that the natives are restless and calling for their removal or replacement. And that does far more to a politician than anything else is to threaten him not being reelected. That is the only thing that they do is they get in office and as soon as they're elected, they start working on staying elected. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to us. We need we need another uh, April 19th, and instead of 1775, it needs to be uh, every day in 2017 and 18. You know, uh, a very good friend of mine used to say, and I've uh, reminded me of it because my dad used to say it. Every politician in D.C. should wake up in the morning with the odor of tar and fresh feathers in his nose. Well, that's uh, pretty extreme there, Jimmy, and I appreciate your passion. Uh, Didn't didn't say we had to do it, John. Just just the odor of it. You know? I mean... (laughs) There's a lot of roofs in, in D.C. that they could be retarding at the time. That's but that, true. that odor should remind them of history itself and some of the actions that were taken uh, on criminal politicians. And believe me, there's a lot of them in there right now I consider criminals. I was at a um, town hall meeting in uh, it would have been, no oh, 19... 19- 95, I think it was, uh, in Salem, Missouri. And uh, the uh, the purpose was to uh, uh, convince 
the residents of Dent County and surrounding areas how wonderful Agenda 21 would be uh, for the Arkansas-Missouri Ozarks. And uh, about halfway through, I, I think the people that sponsored us uh, could smell the tar being cooked out in the parking lot and the pitchforks being sharpened. And uh, uh, they, they didn't quite have to have an armed escort to get away safely, but it was that close because uh, people figured out what they were proposing to do, and they were getting angry. The place was packed, by the way. It was so packed, the, the uh, town hall uh, auditorium was filled to capacity, and they had loudspeakers for people in the parking lot to hear. Um, so I've seen this happen up close and personal, um, and uh, it does get the attention of these politicians. It really does. Uh, I know a uh, former Senator Jim Talent experienced that uh, the first town hall meeting he had after he voted uh, in favor of the uh, assault weapons and high capacity magazine ban in 1994 it was the last town hall meeting he ever had in his career he never had another one again um, and um, the anger was so thick you could cut it with a knife in that room yep. so these these uh, i say good also uh, these events uh these town hall meetings uh do have an effect and does get the attention. It gets, they get to the point where they feel physically threatened. It does get their, definitely get their attention, Jimmy. Oh, yes. And uh, something that I was discussing over the weekend uh, with one of our friends, that um, like down here in New Mexico, Heinrich has not had, he's our, one of our senator, uh, one of our senators down here, he has not had a town hall meeting uh, since last election cycle, I believe, um, none in in the southern part of the state. He'll have them up around Albuquerque and um, the Democrat enclaves of New Mexico all the time. But a friend of ours brought up the fact that they are organizing a town hall meeting for Mr. Heinrich, they're going to notify him that they are having it. They're going to tell him when it is, where it is, and you know, with a couple of months' notice, and it's going to go on with or without him. Right. And I kind of thought about that for a minute, and, um, you know, I looked at him, I'm going, okay, what happens if he doesn't show up? And he goes, well, we're going to have the press here. Do you think that's going to be the uh, headline that he wants to see the next day? Uh, right. So it's a good point. Ladies and gentlemen, there are ways to get their attention. And we've got to do that. I mean, our gun rights are constantly under attack. And the, the scariest part about it is, for everyone that we know about, there have got to be at least 20 in the wings that we don't because they're going to be on a local level, they're going to be on a state level, and we have to stay on top of it. We have to become proactive. And um, that, that's just basically what I'd like to say about that this morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you have, um, if you have someone running for office, and they're having a town hall or a get-together or a debate, bring up the uh, Second Amendment and force them to give you an answer. Don't let them give you a non-answer. Uh, don't let them talk about, oh, yes, when I was a child, I loved duck hunting and everything else. Next question, please. Right. Don't right. let it well, go. Yeah, and that's what they do. Even even uh, anti-gun people like Hillary Clinton and uh, uh, Hussein Obama will verbally support the Second Amendment when nothing could be further from the truth. So, you know, but I don't want to dwell on this too much longer, Jimmy. But I want to urge people if they have a sheriff's election uh, this coming year in 2018 that they uh, have a candidate that will verbally support the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Uh, that's very important that they will have that candidate, that, that they understand that. Um, but let's uh, let's move back to, to firearms and get away from the political yes, stuff. Let's, uh, uh, let's get back over here to where we were. Um, ladies and gentlemen, another thing, um, and today we're kind of basically just talking regular uh, everyday maintenance, 
and and things like that. When we went to the top of the break, I was telling John, I've had two of our listeners contact me about um, probably uh, replacing magazines because of problems with feeding. And I went through the cleaning, lubricating deal with them and asked them, I said, well, try that first and and see if that is it. And if that's not it, get back with me. I'll go ahead and look up magazines and be able to have you some prices and everything. And in both instances, they contacted me back, and sure enough, that, that was the problem. Grit, a little bit of dirt, dust, things like that that had accumulated in them over time affected the way that they fed. So not only is it just it's good maintenance and good practice, ladies and gentlemen, it saves money because sometimes you'll replace things that weren't a problem. And uh, another thing on your rifles and your handguns, the sights on them. Uh, thank goodness we have finally bypassed our distributors and everything and become a direct dealer for Williams gun sights. And uh, Williams sights go all the way back to the 1800s. Uh, they made their, their fame on creating peep sights for Winchester rifles and, and Henry's. And uh, they've never slacked off since then. Now we have a complete line of replacement uh, sights uh, the fire sight, both uh, adjustable and combat fixed, that will replace everything on the Glock, on the Colt, on the Rugers. I don't care what kind of a handgun it is, Williams makes a sight-based system for it. And these fire sights, John, um, you know, tritium sights is the rage right now with everyone. Right. Tritium sights are actually radioactive. You have to charge them up, and then during the night when their charge runs down, and by charging them, you leave them in the sun. Um, some of us that are old enough to remember used to have uh, watches that had iridium faces on them, and the, the hands glowed and the, everything. Well, that was the, basically the same thing in these new sites, uh, new old technology. But the Williams Fire Sight, are fiber optic, and the slightest amount of ambient light, and you can find these sites. So the price on them, uh, on average, runs between 42 and $58, I think, for most any handgun. And in most cases, well, at that price, all of those are the front and rear sites. If your handgun has a molded or fixed front sight that is non-removable, the price for the rear sight that will match up with the existing sighting system that's on there, uh, those prices run between 20 and $35. So if you look at the sights on your pistols, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some people are very excellent instinctive shooters. They can point and shoot and hit a target incredibly fast and repeatedly. Not all of us are like that. We depend upon the sight. And if you struggle on your handgun or your rifle, if you have to struggle to get your sight picture, get your sight alignment, then, uh, and especially, you know, being able to focus on the front sight, if that is a problem with you. Look at replacing your sight system. Most of it can be done right at your kitchen table by yourself or with the help of your child, um, spouse, whatever. But um, I was just checking on the website over here, and a couple of the links aren't working, so I've got to talk to him. But um, the... Uh, Sights on your handgun and everything, they're the deciding factor on hitting the target. If your sights don't function well, if they're loose, um, if they're dirty, uh, I've seen a couple of folks that have got so much lint and, and stuff in their front sight that you couldn't even find the front beads. 
Um, that's something to look at, ladies and gentlemen. Another place to look at on your handguns and your rifles is the grip. Uh, factory grips are designed to be one size fits all. Uh, Teresa has very small hands, and I can sit there and swap grips out on a couple of the different semi-autos, the grips that fit her very well, but when I hold it, it's too small. And if your grip is not correct, ladies and gentlemen, being consistent with your handgun is is going to be a hard act to follow. Same thing with your uh, Hold that thought, rifle. Jimmy. Hold that thought. We got a break. Call numbers 800-313-9443. and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. It's taken three years before I could offer the inter-shelter domes for sale. During those three years, several different governments and militaries were taking all their production. The inter-shelter dome homes may be just what you've been looking for to provide affordable, energy-efficient, permanent, and attractive housing. These dome homes are prefabricated units that can be assembled in a few hours by two men with a ladder and simple hand tools. Check out the photos of these dome homes built in the Arctic on tropical beaches, in suburban areas, and in forests. All the details, many photographs, and the pricing of the dome homes are listed on the left-hand side of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. I think you'll find these homes are not only attractive, but they're energy efficient and a bonus. You can disassemble them and reassemble them as many times as you feel you need the need to. Pretty great, huh? Something that's very, very unique. Check them out at my website at thelibertyman.com. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on thir- one Monday, Monday the 13th of November, visiting with Jimmy Jensling. He's the proprietor of Desert Eagle Shooters. That website is deserteagleshooters.com, a place where you can get excellent professional advice as well as the things you need to keep those firearms functioning. Let's continue, Jimmy. All right, sir. Um, we were talking about the grips and everything. There are a couple of manufacturers, ladies and gentlemen, um, Packmeyer has been around for years, for eons practically. Uh, Hogue is another manufacturer. Um, if you, if you can take your handgun and make it fit your hand better and then your trigger system on it, you have your gunsmith or your armorer look at it and either replace parts or improve parts on it, um, and you keep your mags clean and everything like that, you're going to be very much more consistent in your shooting. Uh, that's what we look for. Not, you know, accuracy is, is great, and being able to shoot nice, tight little groups uh, at distance is fantastic. But the important thing is when it comes down to the pinch, uh, putting meat on the table or protecting your your family. Hitting the target is the most important thing, and it is. hitting the target uh, is meaning to be consistent, so that you ha- you know how the gun performs, and you get out there and you shoot nice nice target center of mass impacts with your handgun or with your rifle. The the point I'm trying to make is not everyone is going to be a world-class championship shooter. 
Uh, if they did, then world class wouldn't be that great of a thing. Well, I, I know what it takes to do that, Jimmy. Let me interrupt you. Uh, the high-level competitors, high-level competitors that, that, that win, it doesn't matter which uh, part of it, if it's uh, skeet shooting or combat pistol competition, precision uh, marksmanship right with rifles, it's basically all they do. They, they, they have their day job, and then everything else they do involves that sport. Uh, typical... Uh, long-range uh, uh, rifle shooter, competitor, high-powered rifle competitor is what I'm trying to say. They'll go through between five and 6,000 rounds each uh, season, uh, both in, in competition and, and in practice, which means changing out the barrel at M14 uh, every season also because that's the barrel life of an M14 between five and 6,000 rounds. Uh, so, no, uh, that kind of dedication is something very few people uh, we'll have the time or the money to do, Jimmy. But it doesn't mean you can't compete. You can still compete and have a lot of fun and not have it take over your life and um, and, and gain these skills uh, without having the sport take over your life, Jimmy, can you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And for each one of those rounds, ladies and gentlemen, that those competitive shooters put down range, there are anywhere from... 25 to 100 dry fire rounds that they produce. Now, that's going to be a subject we're going to try to cover maybe next week or in the near future. But in the training realm, dry fire is the most effective way to build confidence, build muscle memory, and hone any particular skill. In, in either handgun or rifle shooting that, A, does not entail expenditures of money because you're dry firing, all the ammunition and everything is in another room, and, B, there's no noise, there's nothing to disturb anyone, and once you get into the, to the mode of practicing like that, it becomes very, very relaxed and you can focus exactly on uh, what you're doing. Happen, and, absolutely. Uh, Hold that thought, Jim, and we ought to bottom there. break. The call number is 800-313-9443. Right back. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We're continuing our energy cleaner promotion, which began August of 2016. In this promotion, you get to buy an energy cleaner, $70 off retail, and a mattress pad, 10% off retail. $200 $200 of the purchase price of the energy cleaner goes to Republic Broadcasting. This is a great way to help get energy cleaners out to people who need them and have some uh, financial issues to deal with. And, of course, a great way to support Republic Broadcasting. Here's what you do. Send in a postcard. My address is John Moore, P.O. Box 201, Davidsville, Missouri. We pick a postcard every two weeks. If your postcard is drawn... Uh, you get the chance to buy the energy cleaner $70 off retail and 10% off the mattress pads. Put your name and your address, your telephone number and your email address on the postcard, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 13th of November. My website is thelibertyman.com. I want to remind you, we have our uh, field training exercise, USS Liberty, December 31st, 2018. Uh, people bugging me for a date for years, ever since I've been on the radio. John, when's it going to happen? Well, you got a date now. You get to pick the scenarios you want. There's five different scenarios to choose from. 
pick one or pick two or three or all five, whatever you want to get ready for. And you got a goal, which was basically 13 months into the future. So um, check that out and uh, start preparing for whatever you think you need to be prepared for. Also, also at my website, of course, are energy cleaners. This is my home business. When you place your order, I'm the guy that processes the order. I, I pick up the energy cleaner. I uh, personally reconfigure the mattress pads to be compatible with the energy cleaner. I'm shipping a lot this week. I've got, uh, I think, six packages going to the little country post office this morning that I'll put on the counter. Every time I set one on the counter at the little post office at Cherryville, Missouri, I feel like here's another good one for the good guys. Another listener who's going to have strength and energy to do things that they need to do. So check out the energy cleaner at my website. Only two hundred eighty-five dollars shipping included. Keep in mind, I offer a thirty-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't get the relief you're looking for from arthritis pain, joint pain, back pain, just box it up, ship it back. I refund your money. That's all there is to it. Keep in mind, I take PayPal. And um, so I've got a toll-free order line. Here it is: eight hundred five nine two. 9543. I say again, 800 592 9543. Visiting with Jimmy Ginsling, the uh, CEO, proprietor of Desert Eagle Shooters at DesertEagleShooters.com. And we're taking your questions and comments. If you got one, give us a call. The call number here at Republic Broadcasting is 800 313 9443. Let's continue, Jimmy. All right, uh, John. Just. Uh little side note here just for you. I know your affection and everything for shotguns. Uh, have you seen the new kel uh ASG-25? Is that the one with the two magazines? Uh, and it holds 24 plus one rounds. Right, right. That, that's and you, an, you got that's, a little selector switch to select which magazine you, you feed from. Yep. I mean... This is the newer version of it uh, that they've come out with. Uh, that's that's just too much gun for me. I think I don't think I'd want to tote that thing around. It's a uh, it's it's a slide action, isn't it? I believe. Um, well, the new one that I'm looking at appears to be semi-automatic. Oh, really? Semi-auto? That'd be a brute. That'd be a, a, quite a handful, to say the least. Yeah, it's. Um, the way the uh, two new ones, the KSG series, is um, they've configured them more or less like the uh, MSAR uh, AR-15. The magazine and the action and everything is at the very rear of the gun, um, and the trigger firing mechanism and everything is all forward of that. So, um, yeah, it does look like a brute. Uh, just had a email pop up from one of my suppliers with new ad data, and I saw that, and I go, ooh, John would like that. <laughs> um, remember well, the old uh, 22 pistols that had the 100-round rotary magazines on them? Right. Uh, and they also made a small rifle, a carbine rifle, that uh, did the same thing. Right. Right. Um, well, I actually they're, they're have seen those start uh, popping up at gun shows again. Uh, so, well, the, the feds the got old... all all crazy when that first uh, uh, shotgun came out with that drum magazine, and they they basically classified them as a, as a machine gun after several thousand had already been sold. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, but we're way past that. We're, we're we're way past what that drum magazine and shotgun was capable of, aren't we? Oh yeah. In fact, uh, I was watching a video the other day, and uh, the man makes an excellent, excellent point of how the shotgun is the perfect home defense weapon, and uh, his the man can definitely run a shotgun. Uh, myself. I'm average at best with a shotgun. Um, I'm, I'm more of a, ri- a rifle and handgun guy. But, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, whatever weapon that you have. Now, John and I, you know, in our discussions on these shows on, on uh, Monday mornings, we've covered ARs, we've covered... Uh, all the, the FALs and, and all other kinds of uh, 
semi-autos and, you know, talked about single shots and all. The most important weapon that you can ever use is the one that you already own. Uh, it may be old and it may be beat up, but if you are familiar with that rifle, if you're familiar with that handgun, then just make it a little bit better. Maybe improve it a little bit, new grips or sights. Um, but don't let anyone convince you that in order to be safe or to be able to take on bad guys or anything else, that you have to go buy a new gun um, or a new style gun. That That is not the... The, uh, the quest of it and everything. Sure, it's the quest of all the salesmen and everything. Uh, in their mind, everybody should, you know, have a full-size armory the size of a, you know, double uh, walk-in closet or whatever. But whatever it is that you've got, if you learn to use it and use it proficiently, you are just as capable of protecting your family or putting meat on the table as individuals that have the three and four thousand dollar custom built rifles, uh, or the uh, four or five thousand dollar custom uh, Colt 1911s and things. Price is not everything. It's comfort and consistency. As long as you can be comfortable with your preferred weapon and you're consistent in your accuracy, that's what we that's what we shoot for. Pun intended. Consistency. Um, had a friend several years ago, customer, and, and most of our customers become friends. Um, this individual, we were working with them, and it just, you know, in scoring targets, they could never get over, you know, 80%. And most of the time that they were right in the mid to low 70% on score. But... And, and uh, Robert was just, he was frustrated. He, he couldn't, you know, and I told him, I says, look, it doesn't make any difference. At 25 yards with a handgun, you're scoring in this range and you're consistent. That's all that matters. If it comes down to a situation to where you have to protect your family or protect, you know, back up a police officer or something that is critical, you're going to shoot fine. It's not going to make a hill of beans difference because you're consistent. And that made him feel a lot better, and it made him understand that not everyone is going to be a one-hole wonder. Uh, those people, ladies and gentlemen, are few and far between, and like John was saying earlier, they fire thousands of rounds a year in practice. So for us out here in the working world, and the average person, um, as Sean Hannity put it uh, that last election cycle, the forgotten man and woman, uh, consistency is far more important than a one-hole wonder. Uh, so always look at that. And if you've got a if you've got a particular weapon that you want to look at improving somehow, maybe do a different stock on your rifle or shotgun or whatever. Contact us. And let us see what we can do to help you. And uh, there's there's options out there for everything. But please, I, I do ask you to, if you do trigger work or anything like that on your on your guns, have a competent gunsmith or armorer do that for you. Um, sure, they'll let you. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that they'll let you sit there and watch, so you can learn how the components go together and what changes are being made. Um, which is a great well, thing. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't make that assumption. The that there's, you know how it goes back together. I wouldn't make an assumption that, that they'll let you watch because uh, some people get nervous being watched while they work. Uh, that may True. or may not be the case. Yeah, that's, I'm, I guess I'm kind of lumping myself in there. You know, if, if customers want to you know, sit there and, and watch what I'm doing and ask questions, I, I normally don't have a problem with it. Um, the only place that I do... Uh, draw the line on that is when I'm chambering a barrel or something because at that time I'm I'm focused 100% on one thing and one thing only. And 
and uh, mistakes doing that get quite expensive very quickly. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're almost, we've got a few more minutes. Uh, we could take a call, maybe two, if uh, someone wants to holler in and got a question or a comment. But John and I are, are here. We've opened our lives to the public. And in doing so, what we've said is, without saying it, is if you've got a question, if you've got a problem that you're trying to solve, um, contact us. Drop us an email, uh, give us a phone call, whatever method that you prefer. But, uh, you know, I tell people I don't run nine to five hours. If it's seven or eight o'clock at night and you've got our phone number, which again is 575-513-2842, and you have exhausted all avenues or just flustered with the answers that you're getting from other people, give us a call. If I can't answer the question, I've got a wealth of uh, people that I can go to and I can ask. And, you know, most cases when it gets down to points like that, I'll talk to them, pave the way, and then I'll contact you back and give you their contact information so that nothing gets confused in... Uh, the conversation. Uh, on the oops tip for our uh, listeners that have contacted us, John, finally, uh, last Thursday when we got a shipment in, I finally found the part number and the source for the AR platform oops kit I've been trying to find. We carried it several years ago, and uh, I lost the, the product description and uh, wound up finding it again. But for the AR platforms, AR-15, AR-10, this OOPS kit is the best I've ever seen made because they put in it at the price everything that I can't match by, by ordering bulk in, of individual parts. This particular OOPS kit costs $20, and for the AR platform, it has got Two of everything, and that means uh, on your front and rear takedown pins, you actually have four springs and four pins because there's two for each one of them, even though they're identical. But what is unique about this kit is that it actually has a uh, replacement extractor spring and pivot pin in this kit, and it also has a two replacement uh, cotter keys that hold the firing pin in the bolt. So as far as the absolute best and most complete uh, OOPS kit, I finally found the one that I've been looking for. We've got them on order, and for those of you that have been waiting for me to email you back, I'm going to get to you today and answer your questions and work on that. For the couple of them that have contacted me that have lever guns, um, I'm having difficulty with that right now because the replacement parts that I'm finding are made in China. And I don't want to trust uh, our modern firearms to, to springs and firing pins that are made in China, John. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I wouldn't either unless I really did some testing first. We got a caller and hold it. We got Glenn in Philadelphia. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Glenn. How's our friend out east? Good morning, John. Good morning, Jimmy. Hi. Um, I hope I'm not being redundant here. I don't think I've related this to you, to you, Jimmy. I think I mentioned it to John. But you were talking re uh, just a few minutes ago about not having to have the latest state of the art guns and all that sort of thing, and um, I'm, I'm a fan of the older-looking long guns with a nice, nicely crafted wooden stocks and some shape and contour to them. It's something that's pleasing to the eye and, and maybe has a nostalgic element to it, and in that vein, I had picked up um, an old J.C. Higgins uh, Model 20 shotgun, and, you know, these, these things aren't, aren't worth a whole lot, but there's a whole bunch of them still around. It's basically a high-standard 200 but it came with um, interchangeable chokes, 
um, at the end of the one was stuck in there. I couldn't get it out. I found a, uh, a nice uh, young uh, fellow, a, a, a military vet, he was a gunsmith, and I set up shop a few miles from my house, took it to him, and he managed to get it, the uh, stuck choke out of there without pulling out the thread. So this thing is uh, working now, which is, I'm real pleased about it. It's, it's, and it's, you know, like I say, it's uh, old school 12 gauge pump, and uh, I was just real pleased to get that thing working again. It doesn't have to be state of the art. I think a lot of these new um, black plastic guns were kind of like, Remind me of disposable lighters. <laughs> it's all plastic, you know. So I was just, you know, wonder, you know, I just thought I'd relate that to you. Yeah, you're, you're. I, I understand 100 percent where you're coming from. And um, for kind of a gun maintenance tip of the of the week, um, next time that you run into a choke like that that is stuck, uh, maybe you don't have access to your gunsmith friend and everything. Give him a lot of business. Keep get get him built up and keep him around. Uh, especially if he knows what he's doing. But one of the best things, John and Glenn, that I have ever found for getting into corroded threads, especially fine threads like you find on chokes and some of the screws and everything on handguns and rifles, if you will take a metal container and mix 50-50 automatic transmission fluid and acetone and use that to soak the parts in, now, in the case of a rifle, a shotgun barrel with a choke, um, stand it up against the wall or uh, in a corner or something like that that you can put that muzzle down into the can and then use aluminum foil to seal it off because that, that acetone is going to want to Hold that evaporate. thought. Hold that thought. We have a break. We'll be right back. continue, Jimmy. We've got about uh, four minutes here, three minutes. Okay. Um, well, I was saying, Glenn, John, if you take a uh, metal container, uh, that's because of the acetone, and mix 50-50 automatic transmission fluid and acetone, and in the case of the uh, shotgun choke, make sure that it's unloaded, of course, clear the weapon and all, and stick the muzzle with the choke in it down in that solvent, then take aluminum foil and seal it off fairly tightly. Uh, that acetone is going to want to evaporate. But if you'll let that set overnight and then take it out the next day, let it drain uh, on a cloth or something, and then check to see if the choke will turn uh, with your choke wrench. If it moves at all, Say it, say it turns just a little bit and stops, then turn it back the other way, rock it a couple of times and stick it back in and let it soak. What you're going to do is over time you'll be rocking it back and forth and knocking that corrosion loose, and then you'll be able to eventually take it all the way out and not damage the threads. Um, I've had real great success with doing it that way, Glenn. I, th I think the gunsmith did something similar because he did mention having it soak in the solvents. I believe he also heated it uh, somewhat, too, a little bit, so I'm not sure you know, what, you know, what he did. Oh, yeah, heat all the help. Yep. And uh, so, anyway, I'm glad to have it back in, in service. One of the things that's interesting about those chokes, there's actually, like, um, you know, I don't, I, you're probably familiar with this, the, the model. It has, almost looks like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, where they where they go in at the end? Some people think it looks like it has a silencer or something on there. You know, it's like no, no, it's just where the chokes go in. But there's actually a gap between the end of the barrel where the shot pellets exit and when they enter the choke. And one thing I read about that was supposedly there's something about the way the force works that it actually supposedly have like a bit of a mitigating effect on the recoil. 
you know, it actually supposed to, uh, that actually supposedly, uh, I don't know why, it has to do with the way the pressure, you know, works with that. I, I have to look at it a little more. But it's, That's interesting. Okay, yeah, I'll check into that a little bit more. That's, thank you, Glenn. That's an interesting piece of uh, information. Are you familiar with that one, John? No, I'm not. I'm not. That's, That's good information. We'll have to look into that. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, another very thing old school stuff. Educate myself. Uh, yeah, thanks. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Have a good day. Better go. Okay. End of the show. Thank you. We're, uh, we're pretty much out of time here, Jimmy. Any final comments before we wrap it up? No. Um, I'd just like to... Well, excuse me, I didn't want that to happen, but I uh, apologize the phone going off. Uh, be safe, ladies and gentlemen. Always invest in more ammunition. Keep your guns and everything in good working order and maintain your training as the phone rings in the background, John. Okay. <laughs> Live well, radio. Okay. Appreciate it. We'll have you back next Monday. Uh, 22 uh, long rifle ammunition is back down to four cents uh, and less a round, which is a good time to stock up. Uh, we've seen these cycles and uh, get this ammo out cheap. Okay, that's yes, it for the it day. Is. I'm, I'm glad it is coming down. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> with uh, some of the new uh, ammo that's coming out, I've seen a couple of new manufacturers that people have told me about. Right. Uh, I right. haven't played with it yet, but evidently they're making very quality ammunition at right. a reasonable price. Right. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, get your medical supplies, energy cleaning, essential oils now while you can. Your firearms ammunition. Never, ever give up your guns. Have a fun, safe, productive day. And God bless America.